it's an interplay between the canvas and myself. What does the canvas need? What does the form require? This needs to be totally destroyed. Out of destruction comes a new form. Uh, the problem is to shape an idea and out of lifeless material like brushes, knives, paint, bring about something that comes to life. Then all the work that has gone into it is worthwhile. This very second. The paintings of John Corner may be described as warm, peaceful, or lyrical. However, upon sustained viewing, we find them challenging in their many layers of meaning. The themes found in these works are expressed in a visual vocabulary made from images collected worldwide. Some of the most common leitmotifs are from his youth in Czechoslovakia, the past five decades living on Canada's west coast, and from a fascination with the cultures of Japan. To fully appreciate Corner's paintings, the viewer is required to do more than just glance at them. We must fully engage the work with sustained viewing and meditation. The result is most rewarding. Hello, my name is Nicholas Tuelli. I'm the Chief Curator at the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria. This program is an introduction to the art of John Corner, an artist who at an age well past the normal retirement, who continues to share his intuitions through paintings that are eagerly sought by museums and collectors. Those who know John Corner describe him as a gentle and unassuming man. He is at the same time a complex and brilliant artist. I never had any doubt in my mind that uh, John was uh, among the four or five finest painters in this part of the world uh, and that his work will live. John is not a self-publicist. John is not a person who puts himself forward. And he is uh, basically European. He comes from a fine and often envied family. And I suppose all the more, therefore, uh, insists on not attracting attention to himself. But the work attracts attention. And as more and more people know it, uh, simply his stature is recognized. I think there's a kind of mystery about the man, a kind of um, a remoteness, and I think a very personal kind of uh, approach to his work. Um, I do know he's, uh, you know, he's articulate, he's, he's extremely intelligent, and, but I think those are, those, but then what is more important is his painting. His painting really comes through, comes through more than any of this. Without any doubt, I think there's, um, uh, as I say, a, a vitality and complexity in it that will, and a freshness. You know, I mean, a good work of art is something that's alive and um, takes on a life of its own. And I think you can find uh, among so many of John's work that quality. And I think those works will definitely be of interest and fascination to the next century. The fascination these people feel today for John Corner's work is probably best explained by Diane Ferris owner of the Diane Ferris Gallery, where John exhibits. I don't think one needs to know much about art uh, to look at paintings like John's. They just capture you and speak to you, no matter who you are or what language you speak. And um, I, I see that every day with people that look at his work. You just, um, you see your own experience in it. Everyone comes to a painting with a different life behind them. Colors affect different people for different reasons. Um, landscapes 
the appearance of a landscape affects someone from something in their experience and it's wonderful that John's vision seems to have a common thread that everyone finds. Recently, Corner has returned twice to his hometown in Czechoslovakia after a 50-year absence. Many of his newest paintings have been inspired by these visits. I tried to formulate what happened when I looked at a house or other objects and people, landscape that I hadn't seen for many, many years. And I included the, the music of the country, which it may be personified by Dvořák's Slavonic dances. And I also included some of the allusions to what happened during the 40 years or 50 years that I hadn't been in the country. This painting is a combination of images from the past. Forms depicting Czechoslovakia's totalitarian rule are juxtaposed on the canvas with the enjoyable recollections of his family's pre-1939 lifestyle. During his recent visits, he found the family home had remained much as he remembered it. With the whimsical addition of a childhood incident involving a soccer ball in the front window, the importance and workings of memory are much in evidence. I think there is in him a need to bear witness. And that too, I think, speaks in the paintings, a, a, a passionate statement about the value of the world, uh, about the beauty in it, about the need to celebrate that and to uh, affirm it against what is dark and destructive. I think John's political experience is so different from ours. Uh, a notion of a, a culture destroyed, so that he brings a kind of valuing of the freedoms here and the possibility of celebrating all of who you are and what you know that a great many people who haven't had his experience take for granted. The strongest impression of my recent trip to Prague was a visit to the Ethnographic Museum in Prague. As a teenager uh, and in my 20s, I visited it very often. And it contained the first uh, Pacific Northwest art that I ever saw. And it was a tremendous impression for me to see it once again after all this time, but with totally different and much older eyes. What I thought of at the time was that I had looked at it originally, years ago, as an abstract form of art. Then after coming to the West Coast and becoming familiar with the work and the uh, stories behind it, the, f the folklore behind it, it of course assumed a totally different configuration. And uh, then when I realized that I had seen it so blindly so many years ago, I felt shocked. But at the same time I felt elated because those were old friends. And what happens then, I found, is that on one hand you have the memory, on the other hand there's a new impression, a new experience of that memory, and that in, in turn causes a third kind of experience, which is memory and present impression combined and compared. Fifty years of living on British Columbia's coast has had a strong influence on Corner's art. Native motifs, along with forests and oceans, are found in many of his paintings. I came to Vancouver in early 1939, and the country was so vast and so overpowering that for a long time I couldn't cope with the landscape at all. Then, through the friendship of a man who took me on his boat. 
I discovered the landscape from the water. And that really uh, opened up the landscape to me. And uh, that started the Coast Glitter series in, in the early 50s and so on. I would like to say that I don't want to be considered a landscape painter. I want to simply be a painter because there are other aspects that I want to insert, that I want to talk about, and uh, it is not the landscape alone. The landscape is often the vehicle which I use, but so may be the still life, so may be the abstract form. One area where we see abstraction from the landscape work is in Corner's use of multiple horizons. This unusual handling is a metaphor for the multiple richness in nature and for a world containing many different visions. Another meaningful image tied to the West Coast landscape is the tide pool. The tide pool then is an intimate world that we can take in more or less at one glance. And uh, over the rocks we see the ocean with a faraway horizon. It is this interplay between the two that makes the, the tide pool particularly intriguing. It is perhaps a miniature of the universe with all kind of activity and we pass it by much too often. He's wonderful to walk uh, any landscape with. He doesn't talk much, but if you'll follow his eyes, you suddenly see much more than you would before. And again, uh, I think most of us are functionally blind a good deal of the time and John can teach us to lift up our eyes. I can remember walking in a canyon outside Palm Springs with him, and I've walked with lots of people who point out the amazing geology of the desert landscape, because it does dramatically cough up uh, all centuries of la land. But what John was looking at was um, straight lines in nature. Uh, you know, the hard edge is not something the painters invented, there it was. And uh, rather than a scientific lesson, what I was getting was a sense that uh, John found in nature everything he needed and wanted, and found nature uh, an affirmation of any form or shape or color that uh, he might think to use. Jane Rule's insight leads us to yet another theme used by Corner. Corner is fascinated by numbers in nature, and this fascination regularly appears in his art. Indeed, the closer we examine numbers and number series as they appear in nature, the more extraordinary they seem. For example, certain sequences of numbers, thought to have been invented by man, are found to have existed in the natural world long before human beings appeared on Earth. A medieval mathematician has been accredited with the discovery of the number series 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, etc. Surprisingly, this series has been found to govern the way leaves and flower petals organize themselves into aesthetically pleasing shapes and patterns. Ironically, John Corner's first inspiration for the number series came from a man-made object. The number series started when I, perchance, found this old metal template in a lane and uh, looked at it for weeks without knowing what to do with it. It simply appealed to me. It, it's a nice shape. It's an interesting shape. And then, suddenly it appeared in some paintings. And before I knew it, I had a whole series of work which um, contained 
the number five, and then turning it around, you can see the number two, and turning it sideways, you see a more or less abstract shape, which is related to both. The artist's job is visual perception. Everything you see has some kind of meaning, some importance that may not be obvious at the time, but it's sort of sedimented down and eventually appears back. One scene which made an immediate impression on Corner is this view from his Vancouver apartment. While completing work on a previous series, the visual impact of this vista sifted through his subconscious and he eventually became aware of its symbolic potential. The inside and the outside, the relationship from the interior world to the exterior world seemed a very strong symbolic term. The inner world that we know or think to know and the outer world that we have to cope with. This is the, the main problem of living. This idea is also explored in the Pacific Gateway series. Sensitive to the unique dynamics of living on the Pacific Rim, Corner began using references to both British Columbia and Japan. I think when he paints gateways and openings and a sense of blending of cultures, he's again teaching us what we all have to know, that we are all going to live together and we will either do it not knowing each other's languages and being blind to each other's hearts or we're going to learn from people like John that uh, true courtesy is understanding. The term Pacific, meaning peaceful, was the main theme of the series, the peaceful gateway, the, the opening through which we all one day will have to go. He is, I think, a much more spiritual person than most of the secular friends that surround him. Uh, he's very private about that, but again, I think in the paintings, there's a very strong sense of the grandeur of God in the world. The world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out like shining from shook foil. It gathers to a greatness like the ooze of oil crushed. Like the poems of Gerard Manley Hopkins, Corner's paintings have a deeply spiritual aspect to them, which he says, is informed primarily by the teachings of German philosopher Bo Yin Ra. The main idea behind it is, and that is common to all major world religions, is the teaching about the human soul. That means that we live in a physical world, but there's another reality that we don't know yet. and. Uh, the other thing is that the individual is responsible totally for his own destiny. It is not a philosophy in terms of logical thinking, but there are truths that are made to live with, and it has permeated my life and my painting. So often people come into the gallery from various parts of the world and of course they don't know who all our artists are. And over and over again I've had people say to me, tell me about this artist. This is a very resolved person. Uh, or uh, this is such a peaceful spiritual painting. I, I thought it was uh, very simple at first and as I stand here I see more and more things in it. And um, I always have a painting of John's opposite my desk. Um, people would notice that on an ongoing basis, looking in my office. Everybody walks into my office to see what I have. And I always have a John Corner or two. And um, when I'm thinking or talking on the phone, I'm looking at it, and I find I really go into them. I think of 
of a painting as a kind of talisman. You paint it at a time of your full potential. If you are slightly ill, paintings don't work right. Color goes sour. So you, your input has to be total. And just like you charge maybe a, a ring or any object that serves as a talisman, you charge it in time of inner strength. And in time of need, you retract or receive back some of the, some of the strength. That, that's how I look at it. And I've heard sometimes people say that they do receive it. I think that the power of his work is the integration of uh, spirit and landscape uh, of joy and celebration at uh, an integrated world that makes us whole as people in our aesthetics, in our belief, in the uh, faithful and abiding and hopeful quality of human nature. And I think that's what John gives us and requires of us. There is a maturity in John Corner's recent paintings that we can ascribe to the artist's sustained preoccupation with the things that have most powerfully moved him. In Corner's best paintings, he shares his insights into things of importance to us all. John Corner continues to make his fine paintings today and shows no signs of slowing down. Indeed, like other great artists of mature age, Corner's creative powers and insights are finely focused and they reveal ever more profound truths. He affirms his life path and commitment to making art as long as he can. I want to stay with the direction that I'm on and uh, work on new variation, new aspects as they come along. There's no more I can do, is there?